say yes, Lord, to your way. God, we say yes, Lord, to your will. Oh, God, we bless you on today, dear God. Father, we come, Father, in no shape, form, or fashion of our own. Dear God, it is all about you. It's all about you. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God, for the spirit of the only one and true living God that is in this place on today. Dear God, so we thank you, God, for your spirit. We thank you, God, for your spirit that is resting on us, that is resting in us on today. Dear God, I say, Lord, hide me, Father. Father, give me a word, Father, for your people, dear God. A right now word, dear God. A life-changing word, Father, for your people right now, God. Oh, God, we ask, Father, that you would bless, Father, the angel, dear God, of this house, dear God. Oh, God, we lift her up to you right now, dear God. Father, she is our apostle, Father, but she is your child, dear God. So I thank you right now, dear God, for healing her completely. Dear God, you do a complete work, Father, in her right now, dear God. Father, but I thank you, dear God, for giving her what she needs to endure this season, dear God, because this too shall pass. Father, so we thank you right now, dear God, on today. Father, we ask God that you would touch every family that's represented here today at Training to Rain Ministries. Dear God, it is not by coincidence, Father, that we are here. Dear God, give us, dear God, a, a spirit of expectancy, Father. We're not just coming to church just to sit in church, dear God. I may not praise the way you praise. You may not praise the way I praise. But we're all praising God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, so I thank you right now, dear God, for your spirit. Because your spirit changes us. Your spirit changes us, Father, as we empty out and your spirit grows in us, Father, we begin to change. So I thank God for change. I thank God for change. I thank God for change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I'm believing God to change things in our situations as we speak. So, God, I thank you, God, for change. Now, if the whole body will say amen. 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 If I had to come up with a topic today, I would say, Think it not strange when troubles come. Think it not strange when trouble come. Okay? We know that salvation is the confession of our mouth and the believing in our hearts that Jesus, the Son of Man, died and God rose him from the dead. And that's when we're saved. So that's when we know that we are saved. Okay? That's Romans 9 and 10. Uh -huh. Now, but what we need to know is just because we are now saved, don't mean that we're not going to go through something. Amen. I'm reminded of Job mm -hmm. and all of Job's riches. Jesus. Job 1 and 8. Mm -hmm. And it says, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and an upright man who fears God and shuns evil. Now I'm going to give you a brief description about Job. Okay? Job had seven sons, three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 donkeys, and he had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man amongst, amongst all the people in the East. But Job lost it all. Job lost it all. When I say Job lost it all, can you imagine being Job? Job lost everything that he had, but he did not lose his soul. Man. Man. Even Job's wife said to him, 
you are still holding on to your integrity, curse God and die. Job replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And all that Job did, he did not sin in what he said. Many times we want to accept the goodness from God. Yes, we want to accept the good from God. But although we accept the good from God, sometimes there's going to be trouble. There is going to be trouble. If you would, turn with me to 2 Timothy 2 and 12. And 2 Timothy 2 and 12 says, If we suffer, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Jesus came so that we could have life and life more abundantly. But sometimes we have to be tested. So things will begin to arise in our lives and in our homes and maybe even in our children where the Lord God will begin to test us. So think it not strange when trouble comes. Actually, we're actually supposed to rejoice when trouble comes. Uh, Although I know that's hard. It's really hard, you know, when you're losing loved ones, when you're losing people, or you got things going on in your life. It's really hard for us to rejoice in those times. But the Bible says that we are supposed to rejoice in those times. And I'll give it to you like this. We say we want to be more like Jesus. Do you know what all Jesus had to endure? Do you know the things that Jesus had to go through? So think it not strange whenever trouble comes. Because I believe and I know the word says that payday is coming after a while. And I learned a long time ago that you cannot get something for nothing. So you're going to have to go through something. Sometimes we have to be put in the fire. Jesus. We can be put in the fire and still come out not burned and not smelling like smoke. Because it's only because of God. Yes. Think it not strange. Yes. Think it not strange when trouble comes. Yes. Think it not strange when trouble comes. First Peter 4, 12 through 14, it says, Dear friends, <laughs> Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeals that have come to you to test you. As though something strange was happening to you. Think it not strange. Because why? We say that we are the blessed people of God. Don't we say we're blessed? Do you believe that we're blessed? We say that we're blessed. We believe that we're blessed. So the blessed folks have to go through something. If y'all would, I want y'all to turn to Matthew 5 and 3. And if you would, just stand up so we can all read this together. Because I want you to know who the blessed people are. Who are the blessed? Starting at 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. For blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Five, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Yeah. Six, blessed are those who hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Yeah. Come on, seven, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Come on, eight. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Ten. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of the righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. Eleven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Those are the blessed. Amen. We are the blessed. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. When trouble comes, when the doctor says one thing, we know that we're blessed. Amen. 
when, when family leaves, when you lose people, we know that we are blessed. I will be seated. We know that we are blessed. Trouble is going to come, but we have to stand. God has given us everything that we need to stand. Remember, trouble does not last always. It does not last always. We have to keep our hands in God's hands, just like Job did. Job had it all. We would look at Job and be like, Job had it all. But he lost it all, and he still blessed God. Amen. Many of us don't want to praise him if it's not a financial blessing. But we need to know just our life is a blessing Amen. to be amongst the land of the living Amen. with activity of our limbs, clothed in our right mind. We can go in our refrigerators and we can pull out something that we want. God will supply your every need. He will supply our every need. Think it not strange. I just want you to be encouraged on today because we are living in a time where there is hard times. Things are going on. We are being talked about. But we have to remember that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So there's no need for us to feel like we have to fit in. Jesus did not fit in. So if we're saying we're people of God, we're not gonna fit, not gonna fit in. We are set apart from the rest. That's what sanctification means. Sanctification means to be set apart from the rest. God has sought us apart for yeah. a reason. There's a reason why. You know, I, I used to say, Lord, I just wish that my daughters would have a lot more friends. There's a reason why. It's a reason why because there's a calling on their life and they're not going to be able to do what they want to do. Even when they try it, it's going to fail. You're going to have to do what thus says the Lord. You're going to have to. And that's what God does. He loves you that much. He'll start removing people out of your life. He'll start taking things from you. And you'll be sitting around in the natural. You're sitting around thinking, Lord, I've lost everything. But you got to know in order to win for God, you got to lose some of this earthly stuff because you can't take it with you no way. There's a reason why when we die, we can't take our earthly possessions with us because we don't need it. Because we serve a God that has it all. God has it all. All we have to do is receive it. He has it all. I know, I know that times are going to get hard. I know that things are going to come up. I know that you're going to want to fight physically. You're going to want to fight in the natural. But we have to fall on our knees. And remember that we do not fight against flesh. We don't fight against flesh. It's hard. a way of escape. He has given us a way of escape if we would just put our hands in his hands and stop trying to do so much on our own. I know sometimes you might be like, Lord, I just went through this. Okay, Lord, now I'm going through this. Oh, Lord, I waited patiently on this and this is what I'm getting. No, but listen, God is doing something. He is building character in us that will keep us, that will keep us. So think it not strange whenever trouble comes, but we still need to be able to stand in spiritual boldness. This doesn't mean that we run and we hide. We don't hide. We got to face that thing head on after we get instructions from our Father. We got to listen. We got to pray. We got to listen and we got to take those instructions. Amen. And if God say go to the right and everybody else is going to the left, you just go to the right. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I used to normally have a certain way that I go to work in the mornings. But if God takes me off that path, I don't think it's strange when he takes me off that path. I look at it like he's covering me for something. Jesus, that's right. This is why I learned how to, you know, no matter what's going on, I just... You know, you just sit back, you just listen, because you never know why God is in giving you interruption in your life. Interruption can be good because it gives us a time to go and look back and revamp things that's going on in our life. Sometimes we gotta look at the problem and say, God, I see this problem, Lord. But Lord, what is it that you want me to get from it so I can get through it? Because you can't get through it until you get what you need from it. 
But many times we want to run. We want to hide when stuff comes up. And it's easier for us to tell people it's going to be okay when it's not going on in your life. It's a whole different story when it's going on in your life, but you got to be reminded, remindful that he wants us to love our neighbor like we love ourselves, which means if they're going through, we should be praying for them just like it's our very own situation. But sometimes we don't do that. We don't do that. There should be no reason why any of us should be able to come in this church and say we're not feeling good or say that something's going on and we're not able to help one another instead of being judgmental. Amen. Because it's not our right. You don't have that right to judge. Amen. You don't You don't know what's going on. You don't know what it took for any of us to get here. That's right. It took all of us something to get here. Amen. We don't know nobody's story. I know we look at Miss Nancy and we be like, oh, she's so quiet, she's so quiet. Miss Nancy is a powerhouse. She is a powerhouse because she knows how to pray in the spirit. She knows how to move things in the spirit. Even when it comes down to her neighbors, I never would forget they brought one of their neighbors in here and the neighbor had, her boyfriend had something going on. She went to God for the neighbor's boyfriend and God changed things in the neighbor's house. You ain't got to walk over there and be like, I'm going to tell him something. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. No, get on your knees Amen. and tell it to God. Because we make a mess because we try to do stuff on our own. And I said, Lord, it made me feel helpless. You know, when God was teaching me how I have to pray about it instead of trying to handle things on my own, I kind of sort of felt helpless. Like, Lord, I want to just be able to go over there and just let them know what's on my mind. But God said no. And this is when you know that God is doing a new thing in you when you learn how to be quiet. That's right. And people might call it weak in the natural. They might be like, oh, she just weak or she, you know, she just, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they call you. That's right. The only thing that matters is what you answer to them. Amen. But no matter what they call you, you pray about it. And God will start changing people's hearts because people can't change people. Right. Only God can change right. people. Amen. But we need to always be in a position where we are approachable. Amen. We are approachable. We say that we are saints of God and we are ministers and pastors and we're people of God or whatever. And we don't even speak to folks when we see them. People don't know how to accept things from you when you're not approaching them. So people are not going to trust you with their problems when you can't even speak to them on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to learn how to speak to even the folks that don't like us. You ain't being funny. You just throwing your hand up saying, hey, everybody, and keep on walking. And it's okay. It's okay. Because you never know. You just never know. What does the Bible say? When, when your ways are pleasing to God, even your enemies, even your enemies will basically have to accept you. I'm paraphrasing. But even your enemies will begin to speak to you. People that you that didn't like you. I mean, you could have been people that you actually offended. That's the thing. We're not perfect people. So it could have been people that we've actually went out and offended. But God will start moving on our behalf if we would just trust him. The only thing that God wants us to do is to believe. If we would just learn how to believe and allow God to change things for us, he will do it. He will do it. We have to remember, y'all, y'all can stand all over the building, that the battle is not ours. It's not our fight. It's not our fight. We're not built to carry this. So we have to give it to God. And when we give it to him, we have to believe that God is God and he's going to do it. I'll tell you this. When you speak peace, because this is what the Holy Ghost had told me. When you speak peace, know that God is peace. And if God is peace, there will be peace. When you speak peace, know that God is peace. So since God is peace, 
there will be peace. Oh, you speak it, believe it, and you know it. Amen. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you speak it, you believe it, and you know it. That's the same thing with your healing. When you know that we are the healed of God, you speak that you are healed, you believe that you are healed, and you better know that you are healed. If you just, I mean, if you get nothing else out of this, remember that if God said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. If God said it, we believe it, it shall come to pass. Because if you think about it, in the, in the, in the Bible, a lot of folks were healed because of their own faith. Although they didn't see it, you know what I'm saying? Although, you know, you, you still got the sword, the sword hadn't left yet, you still got it, the sword still hurt, but you still believed that you were healed. Amen. And Jesus said, because of your faith, you are healed. So it's according to your faith. I need us to increase our faith and know that if God be God, and we believe that God is God, and we believe that we are the healed of God, whatever our situation is, apply it. Apply the belief, apply, apply God, apply the belief, and apply the know. You got to know what you know. And I know that my God is an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He is a healing God. And there is nothing that is too hard for my God. And this is what I know. So no matter what comes up, no matter what happens, know that God is God and he is going to take care of you. And not only will he take care of you, he will take care of your children. He'll take care of whatever situation that you put in his hands. But we have got to believe who God is. We've got to believe who he is. Come on and give him some glory on this place. We've got to believe. Come on and bless him. Bless him because he's worthy. Bless him. 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 Lord, we thank you right now, Father, on this day, Father, for your word. And we know that we are blessed people. Do not ever forget that you're not a blessed people of God. If there's anybody that needs prayer today, the altar is open. The altar is open for anyone that needs prayer today. If Apostle Man, if you would put your mask on, and those that are going to be praying with Apostle, we need to be mindful that we have to wash our hands. She is going through chemo right now, that we all know, and we are more harmful to her. Than she did anything. She's got on her mask because we have to be careful about us touching her. I don't know if y'all know that my husband was also diagnosed with leukemia last year, and these are just things that we had to go through. We had to be mindful about touching, and and just like the little small cold, y'all might be like, well, that's just a little cold. You know, her immune system is going to be weak because of the um, chemo that she's taking, which means her white blood cell count is going to be low. But we're believing God for a supernatural um, protection, a supernatural hedge that he's going to place around her. That nothing is going to be able to penetrate her. No matter where she goes, no matter you know who comes around her, she's going to be healed. She's going to be healed. And it's not going to affect her. So we're believing God that she will not be affected in any shape, form, or fashion. Um, Pastor Carl, if you would, if you would put some oil in this, uh, what's the proper name for this? Shofar. What is it? Shofar. Shofar. If you put some oil in it, we're just going to pour some oil on Apostle uh, a little bit. We're going to pour some oil on Shanna and Tiana. Pastor, G, well, Pastor Jimmy and um, I know it's Apostle Maddie's sister. <laughs> but if you would come, if you would come, because I don't, I, I would like for y'all to pray for my daughters just because they're my daughters. And, and I need them to believe that the Spirit of God is speaking, and I'm not just speaking as their mother. So sometimes, you know, anytime they come up for prayer, I know what their need is, and some of their need. I might not know everything that they need because they are only going to share so much with me as well. But I just believe that the men and women of God, if you guys could just, you know, be praying, praying for them. If I could get Apostle Maggie Susan to pray for the girls. Pastor Minister Shirley, pray for the girls. 
if I can get the men to actually pray for a possible. And we're going to pray strength into her. And we're not going to touch her. We're just going to be around her. And Pastor um, Carl is going to pour oil on her. And the minister is going to pray for the girls.
God. Come on, let's give another hand clap for praise this morning. This young lady has been on my mind this week, and, and uh, you always on my mind. I ain't even worried about you. You always on my mind. Is God gonna work it out? Amen. I know it's working. Amen. I know it's working. Amen. Amen. When you pray and you believe God and leave it in His hands, just like you spoke about this morning, just learn to leave it alone. Let God have it. Amen. Even though you feel a little helpless, don't worry about it. You ain't helpless. God's working it out. Yes. If you can fix it, then you go ahead on and fix it, right? Amen. But you can't fix it because God's got to fix it. Amen. Amen. This morning, would y'all like to have a word to say this morning? No. I'm just thinking of praising God for being a big God in my life. I'm thinking of praising God for being in a place I've never been in. I'm just thinking of praising God for the sweet spirit I feel in the house. Amen. I'm not expecting something, praise God. Come on. I'm to look at you and you and you. I'm coming to look at the Lord. So <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. 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 Praise off, praise praise God. God. Amen. Pray, first of all, pray for his driver's license. Praise yeah. God. I've been driving for 20 something years now, and I'm tired. All <laughs> right, I understand that. I understand that. I thank you, praise God, for what he's doing in his uh, husband's life. Praise God. I thank you, praise God, for how I met the mother. Praise God. She showed me nothing but love. Everybody that came uh, to Pastor Tanya's church, she showed nothing but love. Praise God. Amen. 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 Amen.
So sometimes, church, we don't always know what God is going to do. But when I told you this morning, there's always going to be something in this house. That's because he was preparing to do something, whatever it is that he wants to do. Amen. All we got to do is be patient and let God move the way he wants to move. Amen. 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 I learned a long time ago. Just let God move. Just don't get in his way. Just let him do what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. We got to learn the way to We got to learn the way to Everything don't come when we want it to. It comes when he wants it to. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Just bask in his presence, man. That's all you got to do. Just bask in his presence. Amen. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's peace. There's peace. Yes. There's peace. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's done. <laughs> it's done. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Amen. It's done. Amen. 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 Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Learned a long time ago. You got to learn to wait on the Lord. Amen. And then when God shows up, be patient. Let him do what he wants to do. What you in a hurry for? You can't outdo God. We pray and ask God to show up. And then when God shows up, we want to get in a hurry and get out the door. What for? Lay it on him. Receive the blessings that God has for you. Amen. Amen. If it takes 10 minutes or if it takes two hours, let God do what he want to do. The children of all Under the rest 
God rewarded him by giving him his driver's license. So, so we just bless God for that. We do. Now I'm going to turn it back into the hands of Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.